club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing Some of the time we might do drawing and painting But most of the time we will do painting and drawing Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art club! Hello and welcome to another Art Club! I'm Olaf Falafel and today I'm joined by a very, very exciting co-host. It's this tin of baked beans. What do you say to that? That's baked bean for hit subscribe, please. Great, so he's going to be chipping in throughout the show, aren't you? There you go. Right, I want to start off by first of all thanking you all for sending in all of your great artworks. We had loads of worms going up into space, not just in turnips, but in all sorts of crazy things. Uh, we also had, they should be running, are they running up there? That They are running up there, good. Uh, we also had loads, of, wow, I was blown away by the Salvador Dali inspired landscapes. Some of them actually gave me nightmares. What about you? <laughs> See? So thank you. See? So thank you so much for sending those. They were absolutely brilliant. Don't forget, if you want to send me any of your artworks from today, make sure you use the hashtag OlafArt. And why do we like that hashtag? Because it has a in the middle. Now, uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has clicked subscribe. I think we're around about two and a half thousand subscribers, which is really good. If you haven't clicked subscribe, please do that now. And also, this really helps. Please tell your friends and please tell your teachers about our club. Your teachers are really good because what I've noticed a lot of the teachers are doing is setting it as your class's art homework. So that means that you get homework to watch this fun show. I mean, tell your teachers. Right, on this show today, it's quite a special one because we're doing all about pop art. Pop. Pop. It seems that every time I say the word pop, a weird sound effect plays. That should be quite fun. Oh, I almost forgot. My picture of the worm going up to Neptune. I said that one of you could win this if you entered the special code phrase into the comments and the lucky person who has won this, their name should come up around about here. If that is you, have a look in the description to this video and you'll see what you need to do. Right, that's about it. I think we need to get on with Art Club, but before we do, have you got anything to add? <laughs> Seems fair enough, uh, pop. Yep, it's all working. Let's go! Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Okay, it's two-part drawing time. If you've watched Art Club before, then you'll know what we do. We do a bit of a drawing first, and then we finish that drawing off at the end. Actually, if you've watched all five Art Clubs so far, plus this one, mention it in the comments and I might give you a trophy. Right, let's get on with the drawing. What you're going to need is a sheet of paper, have it landscaped like this, and we're going to need a pen. I like to use this brush pen quite often. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to move you to the side slightly. Okay, don't sulk. Uh, first thing we're going to do is a circle. Imagine there's a line along the middle of your page. The bottom of the circle should touch the top of that line. So it's just above the halfway point of your sheet of paper. So don't make the circle too big either. This is going to be the eye of a creature. Now inside that we're going to do another circle which is going to be the pupil. There we go. Try and get it in the middle if you can. And then inside that we're going to do a smaller circle there and then a bigger circle there, almost like the figure eight or a snowman sort of. And then we'll color in these bits black. So the two bits we've left white, they're going to be the reflections in the eye. Now what we're going to do is grab a red pencil. You've got a red pencil and we're going to do some bloodshot veins. So they're kind of almost like branches or lightning strikes. And we'll do a few of those. You can branch them off a few times like that. Uh, there we go. And just do a few of those, bigger and smaller, make them look kind of random. Uh, one more here. 
So that's the eye. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is the smiling mouth. It's quite a happy little creature, this one. And what that is, is a curved line like that, followed by a slightly bigger curve like this. And then within that, we are gonna do some teeth. So one, two, three, four. Room for one more, yeah. And we'll do an M shape, which will make the tongue. You see what I mean? And this particular creature is gonna be wearing a little hat. So we'll do that up here. We'll leave a bit of a gap and we'll do the hat. It's a curved line like this. And then it's another M shape. But this one is kind of a bit more like that. And then we'll do the, the band that goes around the hat. Like so. Now, this next bit, it's a bit of a break from what we normally do. We normally colour it in right at the end. But what I'm going to do here, this is a kind of a really squiggly creature. And I'm going to, I'm going to use blue. You can use whatever colour you like. You can do it multicoloured. And what I'm going to start doing is colouring sort of around the eyeball, like so. And you can be quite rough with this because it is quite a squiggly monster. And I'm going to colour around the smile, like this. And you'll see what I'm doing soon. And I'll colour a bit under the hat join this up a bit. So you should have a kind of a blobbish shape like this. Oh, I almost forgot. Do a little eyebrow over the top of the eye. There we go. If you've got room. Now get your pencil again and we're going to do some squiggles. So I'll just do some really rough squiggles. And this, there is no real rule to this. Just keep it going all the way around. It's quite a squiggly monster. I'd really like doing this. I said monster, it's not really a monster. You'll find out what it is in the second part, actually. And if you've used a color that you have a darker version of, so for example, I've used a light blue here, and I've also got a dark blue, it's quite short, but you can then, if you want, go over that slightly with your darker color. It makes a good effect a few bits kind of just sprouting out like this. Quite a messy, scruffy looking thing. And if you've got a darker colour, just do a little bit of darkness under the eye there. A little bit of shading. Just makes that eye really stand out. You can do a little bit of shading underneath the hat as well. Oh, and colour in the inside of the mouth. So if you've got a darkish colour, I might use my dark blue actually colouring the inside of the mouth. And the red that I used to do the bloodshot eyes, I'm going to do the tongue but press quite lightly so it goes pinkish. And while you're at it, you can colour the hat in. Hat can be any colour you want. I think I'm going to give mine a kind of a dark green hat. I might make the band goes around the middle of the hat, a lighter green. So that is the beginning of our creature. Come back at the end of the show to find out exactly what kind of a creature it is and where it's going to be. What's green and has wheels? Grass! I was lying about the wheels part, and that joke has come from Sissy, aged eight. Right, art clubbers slash subscribers, I'm looking forward to seeing what that creature becomes, but now we're gonna do a quick guide to shading and shadows, but hopefully we're gonna make it fun because we're gonna be using our old friend, the bouncing bum. So what I'm going to do is draw the outline of the bouncing bum first, just here, so it looks like this. It's kind of, that's roughly the bouncing bum. It doesn't have to look just like that. And what I've got here is a little paper torch that I've made so we can demonstrate where the light is coming from. So in this case, the light is coming from the side here, the right hand side, and where it is touching the bum first. Did I just say touching the bum? is this edge here and this edge here. So when we're shading, oh, I'm gonna use this pencil, we shade the opposite, the furthest side from the light. So we shade around this curve here. And the further away 
the darker your shading gets. So this edge is the darkest edge. Oh, doesn't matter if you go over the lines, this is only a little bit of a quick exercise. And then this bit here will be a little bit darker as well. And if this bum was on the ground, the shadow would be right underneath it, but it would be going back. So I'll show you what I mean. The shadow's right underneath where the bum is touching the floor. And because the light is coming from this side, the shadow goes all the way back and is quite long like this. Now, if, like in my animation, the light is coming from above like this, let's draw another bouncing bum. This time, this is where the light is touching the bum. I just said touching the bum again. So this edge here is furthest away from the light and this edge here. So this is what we're gonna shade. And then right at the bottom of the bottom is where it's the darkest, here. Now, if this was on the floor, the shadow would be directly beneath it. But I'm gonna have this one slightly above the floor. So quite close to the floor, but slightly above. So the shadow would be actually underneath. And the shadow is gonna be just a bit of a kind of a semi circleish shape, something like that. So that looks like our bum is just off the floor, about that much off the floor. If the bum was further away from the floor, you'd still do a little shadow, but it would be smaller. I'll show you what I mean. I'll do this quickly. So it looks like that bum is a lot higher up because the shadow is smaller. Now, a little quick tip for you. If ever you want your characters to look like they're a bit more menacing or threatening, do a torch from underneath. So if you uplight them, the shadows will be at the top. I'll show you what I mean with the bouncing bum. Bit of an odd shape. So the top edge is furthest away. So that's the edge that's gonna be the darkest. And make the edge right at the top really dark. And we'll put a bit of a shadow underneath, not too much. And the shadow will actually go off behind him a bit. And because this one's a bit sinister, he's a bit angry, he's not bouncing. I think we could have him saying something like, I ain't gonna bounce no more until I get a pay rise. I definitely want to see that bum bounce some more, so I think we best give him a pay rise. What do you reckon? Agreed. And that was a quick lesson on shading and shadows. What is Beethoven's favorite type of fruit? Banana. -na. <laughs> and that joke has come from Elena, age 12. quite funny. Right, now it's time for our one minute artist section. Although today it's going to be slightly different. We're going to be learning about an art movement instead of an artist. That's like a load of artists all doing the same or similar kinds of things. And it's going to be pop art. <laughs> one minute art movement, pop art. Pop art is an art movement that started in the United States and Britain during the mid to late 1950s. Probably the person who is most instantly recognized as a pop artist is Andy Warhol. The aim of pop art was to challenge traditional art movements and to use imagery from popular culture, such as advertising, comic books, celebrities, and mass-produced items like cans of soup or bottles of Coca-Cola. American artist Roy Lichtenstein loved comic book art and explosions. Jasper Johns was famous for his flag pictures. In Britain, Peter Blake was famous for his work with pop artists, including this cover for The Beatles. And Richard Hamilton used adverts to make fun collages. Andy Warhol once famously said, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. 
and Elaine Sturtevant took pop art to the next level by making work from other artists' artwork. And that is pop art in a minute. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? And also quite educational. Now, I thought it'd be pretty cool to make one of Roy Lichtenstein's explosion pictures. <laughs> what he used to do was take a word that was an onomatopoeia word. If you don't know what onomatopoeia, sorry, it's going to be some education. It's a word that sounds like the thing that it's trying to describe. So, for example, bang. It sounds a bit like a bang. Or gurgle. Sounds like the gurgle of a drain. So it's a word that kind of sounds like the sound that it's trying to describe, if you know what I mean. I hope I've explained it, I might not have. But words like rumble, moo, giggle, chatter, shuffle, blast, pop, squeak, are all onomatopoeia words. Now what I want you to do is pick one that you really like and we're gonna turn that into a Roy Lichtenstein style explosion. I really like the word plop, but I like to put quite a few P's on the end so it sounds like a real plop. All you need is a sheet of paper and then something to draw with. I'm gonna use this pencil and all we're gonna do is write our word, our onomatopoeia word in the middle of our page. And I'm gonna try and make it using these thick kind of letters. So. It starts with a P, which is going to look a bit like this. And then that's the inside of the P there. And the next letter we're going to tuck behind. So this is quite tricky. So you've got to imagine that the next letter, which is L in my case, although it will depend on what your word is. So in this case, the L tucks behind the first letter P. Now my next letter is going to be an O, and that will slightly tuck behind the L go like this. This can be quite tricky. If yours doesn't look exactly like mine, then it really doesn't matter, because I know this can be quite tricky, tucking it behind. So that's the O. Now I might do a few P's, so I'll do one P here. And then I'll do another P behind. Roy Lichtenstein was influenced a lot by comics and the kind of lettering that you would get in comics. I might even do one more, getting smaller, so it looks like the plop is kind of fading off as it gets towards the end. And always end with a great exclamation mark. So that is a dot with a kind of shape like this. It's almost like a triangular type shape. That is our word. Now we're gonna to have to draw the explosion behind it. And that's quite easy. It's just some like lines like this. Zigzaggy type lines that go all the way around. And they can go off your page there like that and then come back in. If your paper's too small. And they don't have to be like straight lines. They can kind of curve a bit. And again, it really doesn't matter if yours are neat or not. Once you've got your basic shape like this, then you can start to add a few more points. You see what I mean here? So I like to add a point there, and perhaps add a point there, and oh, that would have been a point if I'd had enough room. And that's the same there, and the same here. Do one here. And we can also add in some rectangles like this. Just in the direction away from our word. Like this. Any space, there's a little space here. Now it's time to start colouring it in. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use primary colours, which are red, yellow, and blue. They, they knew that already. And I find it's quite good if you've got felt tips for these ones, 
or if you don't have felt tips, you can use pencils or use whatever you like, to be honest. But I'm gonna use red, yellow, and blue, and I'm gonna color in my main word, yellow. Let me get the, the thick end of this. If you go over the lines, it doesn't matter because we're going to be going over them later in a black pen. But what we're going to do next are those little triangles that we added behind our main flash. And we're going to be colouring those in using a little uh, dotted technique. So what Liechtenstein used to do, he used to like to kind of copy the dots that you get when you print. And what we'll do, I'll show you how. Start with a dot and then do a little bit of a gap to your next dot. And we'll do a row of dots like this. And then when we do the next row underneath, we'll put the first one underneath the gap, and then the next one underneath the gap, and then underneath the gap, and so on. We'll have half of one there, and perhaps there's a little bit on there. And then when you come underneath this one, it's underneath the gap. There we go. And it kind of makes kind of a geometric pattern. A bit like, oh, we go above the gap there, above the gap, so you always go above or below the gaps. Doesn't matter, again, if you don't get it just right. And we'll carry on in that way. You can make the dots go closer together or further apart. If you wanna make it look darker, you put the dots closer together. If you wanna make it lighter, you put them further apart. And we'll do all of these triangles. Once you've coloured in all of the dots on your triangle bits, then we're going to do the background. I'm going to do mine in blue, but you can do it whatever colour you like. Right, now all you need to do is go around all of the outlines using a thick black pen. And there you have it, your own Roy Lichtenstein inspired onomatopoeia explosion picture. It'd be great to see all of yours. You don't have to use the word plop, use your favourite onomatopoeic word. <laughs>
And once you've drawn your emoji eight times, all you need to do now is color each one in, in a different color scheme. They don't have to be the colors they actually are in real life. They can be any colors, go crazy. There you go, my very own plop art. <laughs> I said plop. Is it a bit wrong that I think they look quite appetizing now? I don't know. Anyway, please do share your emoji pop art pictures with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And make sure if you are on Twitter and Instagram, you use the hashtag OlafArt. <laughs> Now, you may remember from the beginning of the show that we did this, didn't we? The beginning of a very strange creature. Well, we're gonna finish that off now and I'm gonna tell you what that creature is exactly. So first of all, get your pen that you used and the first thing we're gonna do are the legs, okay? So we'll do the back leg. It's gonna be kind of skipping along. So we'll do one leg bent like this and the little foot just and the next leg is going to be straight, but going diagonally forward like this. So now we're going to do two hands. One hand is going to be going backwards like this. Get the thumb there, and I'm just going to give it three fingers like that. And the next hand is going to be grabbing onto a little suitcase because this little creature is off. Do your thumb up there again, and do three sausages here, little sausage shapes. These are gonna be the hands, and it's gonna be gripping the suitcase. So if we do the handle coming there, the handle there, and then if we do the suitcase shape, the suitcase is like a rectangle. Finish off this arm. Do the handle there. And do the handle there. And on that suitcase, we'll do some little straps that go like this. Now, this little creature, he's quite happy and he's hopping along. I want you to do a little shadow underneath him, like this. And that will make it look like he's jumping, like he's off the ground. Now we're gonna do the background, and I want you to draw a line that's curved, a bit like a hill, like this. And when you get to about here, I want you to draw a little crater, it goes like this. And then do a little kind of hole in the crater. Our creature has just come out of that crater. So what we're gonna do is a little line like this. Perhaps you could double that line up. So it looks like he's just bounced out of that hole. Uh, and it's at this point that I'm going to reveal to you what kind of creature this is and what exactly he's come out of there. He is actually some belly button fluff. And that there is his owner's belly button. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll have quite a hairy stomach. So I'm gonna put a few hairs. <laughs> you might not have a hairy stomach, but your belly button creature could have come from your mum or your dad. Hopefully your mum hasn't got a hairy belly button. Although I'm not making any judgments. So there we go. Now this belly button fluff 
he's bored of being in his owner's belly button, so he's off on holiday. He's going on an adventure. So we're gonna do a speech bubble. Uh, I'm gonna use another pen for this, because writing's a bit easier with this pen. Uh, and he's gonna say something along the lines of, um, that's it, I'm off to, and then put in where you would like to go or where you would like your belly button fluff creature to go to. So I'm gonna write here. That's it, I'm off to Japan to live in a sumo wrestler's belly button. Now, I imagine that his owner that he used to live in is sunbathing in the garden. So I'm gonna add in a few background trees and flowers and plants, and then I'm gonna color it in. So you can do that too if you like, or if you don't want to, don't. And there you go, a little ball of belly button fluff off on an adventure whilst his owner has a snooze in the garden. And if you would like to win my signed copy of this drawing, all you need to do is go to the comments in this video and enter a very special code phrase, uh, which my co-host here will tell you now. There you go, so just put that in the comments below and one lucky viewer will get a chance to win this drawing. Well, unfortunately, that is the end of another art club. Aww. But don't worry, there will be another one next Monday. Right. Now, I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you haven't clicked subscribe, do it now. Also, please, please, please tell your best friend about Art Club if they don't already know about it. Tell your teachers and get your parents to tell their friends because it'd be great to get loads and loads and loads of new subscribers for next week's Art Club. Also, don't forget to keep sending in your artwork. What's the special hashtag? That's right, Olaf Art. Uh, and what else? Oh, yeah, your jokes. Keep sending in your jokes. And nope, I think that's it. Oh, how should we end the program today? <coughs> the bouncing bum animation? Okay, why not? Roll the bouncing bum animation. Bye! <coughs>